Upon graduating recruit training, Marines take 10 days of boot leave and then report to the School of Infantry. Those Marines going into the infantry report to Infantry Training Battalion, while those in other military occupational specialties report to Marine Combat Training, or MCT. This is where they learn the basic combat skills needed to survive in war. As we journey to MOS school, let's take a look as Camp Pendleton activated a battalion of Marines. Drums and trumpets rang out in ceremonial fashion as the Wounded Warrior Battalion West was activated aboard Camp Pendleton August 1st. The ceremony was held at Camp Pendleton's Naval Hospital and hosted more than 200 guests. The battalion is part of the newly formed Wounded Warrior Regiment based in Quantico, Virginia and is the sister unit to the Wounded Warrior Battalion East at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Marines in the battalion will carry on traditional obligations by assembling for formations and performing duties to the best of their capabilities. It's, it's, it's a pretty good environment to recover as far as the structure is not too strict, but at the same time you're still a Marine. Uh, but they, they make sure you get to your scheduled appointments at whatever facility, either here or on base, or uh, they have a couple off-base facilities. They provide transportation, food, place to sleep, you know, entertainment. And there's all sorts of events that uh, people hold for us. As well as providing the necessary medical attention, the battalion offers Marines an even greater service, a sense of belonging. It kind of seemed like you're just on your own with you and your case manager and your doctors. And uh, having an actual battalion, an actual unit to represent you, it's, it's going to unify everybody a lot more, I think. Sergeant Major Bradley Castle was the guest of honor for the event. Castle took time out to talk with injured Marines and offered his words of encouragement. The nicest thing about all this is just knowing that if any of my friends get injured or anything overseas, I know they're going to be taken care of. Reporting from Camp Pendleton, California, I'm Lance Corporal Nick Lineman. I'm Corporal Ryan Trevino, and these are your target points. A Marine from 1st Reconnaissance Battalion decided to take a big leap into his reenlistment. Staff Sergeant Daniel Middleton re-enlisted over 5,000 feet above the ground in the back of a CH-53 helicopter. Right after the ceremony, Middleton parachuted out of the bird and floated down to drop zone Vaseline. The wounded warriors of Camp Pendleton now have a new place to relax on the weekends. A brand new beach cottage was dedicated August 10th to the wounded warriors. The cottage, which is located on San Onofre Beach, is handicap accessible and is available for reservation to all wounded veterans and their families. Country Western recording artist Phil Vassar decided to give back to the service members of Camp Pendleton August 3rd. The singer-songwriter, along with other musical acts, performed on stage at Del Mar Beach in a free concert for thousands of service members and their families. The concert organizers said this was just a small way to thank Marines and their families for their many sacrifices. The modern day high school football team and the 1st Marine Division recently teamed up in an effort to show support for each other. The event, called Monarchs for Marines, was held July 21st and featured football and dance camps, which service members and their families were encouraged to participate in. The Monarchs also worked throughout the day to improve the landscaping of the child development centers aboard the base. First Marine Division's Commanding General, Brigadier General Richard Mills, presented several tokens of appreciation to the school, as well as allowing them to wear the First Marine Division logo on their jersey during their upcoming season. And that does it for this month's Target Points. I'm Corporal Ryan Trevino. Hey everybody, I'm Phil Vassar and you're watching Marines TV Pendleton. Rock on. Hello, my name is Lieutenant Commander Kurt West and I am the Operational Stress Control and Readiness Psychiatrist here with 1st Marine Division at Camp Pendleton, California. Combat stress injury and post-traumatic stress disorder are growing concerns for the Marine Corps as the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan continue. These conditions are the result of injury to the brain and mind that can occur when a person experiences or witnesses traumatic events. The Marine Corps needs mission-focused Marines and sailors, but combat stress injury and PTSD can get in the way and lead to bad decision-making. Signs and symptoms of combat stress injury or PTSD could include nightmares and intrusive thoughts, difficulty sleeping, anger problems, feeling emotionally numb, staying away from people or places, other problems such as depression and substance abuse. These effects can impair a Marine's ability to function at work and at home. If you think combat stress injury or PTSD may be affecting you or one of your fellow Marines, help is available. Contact one of the following, your unit chaplain, your battalion aid station or medical department, Marine Corps Community Services, or Military One Source. Seeking help is not a sign of weakness and Marines take care of Marines. 
The sooner you get help, the sooner you can be back to 100%. Signs of suicide show up, so should you. We've made it to the Assault Amphibian School Battalion, which is a military occupational specialty school. Here, students learn the necessary skills to run these amphibious monsters. Now, let's catch up with Lance Corporal Tyler Barstow as he reports on a new training tool designed to save Marines' lives. Non-combat related deaths are a growing concern among the Department of Defense. In order to combat Humvee rollovers, two new simulators will soon be available for training. The simulators, called Humvee Egress Assistance Trainers, or HEAT, rotates multiple times, stopping at various angles. This allows the Marines to respond and evacuate the rollover at any position. The simulator provides Marines with the physical experience and disorientation of being in a Humvee that is rolled over. Myself, going through the course, I thought that I'd be able to know how to get out of a vehicle that's overturned, but once you get in there and you get chucked around, you have your rifle, your extra ammo cans, that stuff getting tossed around, you really realize that uh, you have to really focus when it's trying, time to get out of that vehicle. Once they complete the training, Marines will be more confident in responding to a rollover and understand the Humvee's capabilities better. Training on base provides a safe, controlled environment for the Marines, rather than forcing them to respond when they are in harm's way. By the time they have to respond in real-life situations, they can respond faster, having experienced it before. Marines will start training with the simulator later this month when it is approved by Training Command. Reporting from Camp Pendleton, I'm Lance Corporal Tyler Barstow.